And you're welcome to RT International. This is the weekly. But first, we want to update you on the breaking news from the first round of France's regional elections, where exit polls show that the far right National Front Party leads in six out of 13 regions. Marine Le Pen's party is estimated now to be on course for securing 30% of the total vote in the initial estimates. No actual results, we have to stress, has been declared as yet. But within the past hour, Le Pen addressed cheering supporters at party headquarters. Ladies and gentlemen, the people have spoken out and France can now hold her head high. This vote confirms what has not been confirmed by official observers, that the National Front is now the leading party in the country. Let's take a look at the campaign points which party leader Marine Le Pen there appeal to voters with. Merci, Madame Merkel de nous faire le plaisir de venir aujourd'hui avec votre vice-chancelier, administrateur de la province France. La construction européenne, petite au départ, animée de bonnes intentions sûrement, mais qui peu à peu détournée de ses objectifs initiaux, est devenue un terrible catalyseur de la violence de la mondialisation. Le refus absolu du fondamentalisme islamique doit être proclamé haut et fort par quiconque tient la vie et la liberté pour les valeurs les plus précieuses. Well, of course, the voting is taking place in the wake of the Paris terror attacks three weeks ago. The current refugee crisis in Europe is also likely to have an impact. Success in the regional elections is a key step on the road to the presidential race in 2017. Let's go live now to Paris and to RT contributor Anna Baranova for more on what we've been seeing. Hi Anna, the right wingers were predicted to do well but the exit poll successes appear to be even surprising to them. Absolutely, Yunan. Uh, good evening to you. Marine Le Pen has already been quoted uh, saying that the results have exceeded their own expectations. And uh, everyone was expecting that they would do very well in two regions. And we're talking about six regions now. So uh, the two stronghold positions that uh, Marine Le Pen and her niece, Marion Le Pen, hold are in Picardie Nord, Pas de Calais, which is in the north of France, and then way down in the south of France, uh, Provence. Côte d'Azur. There, they've scored 41% uh, with Marine Le Pen up north and 42% down south. That is a lot. In the overalls, uh, we're talking about the National Front scoring about 30%, which again is uh, quite a lot because no one has won in the first uh, round previously. Um, there is going to be a second round next Sunday on the 13th of December, so we're waiting for that. But even now, the results. Uh, are quite surprising to many. Now, this has been anticipated by uh, so many people here in France because in France it is forbidden to speculate on the elections uh, on the election day. So the media was tiptoeing around uh, the facts uh, uh, of what was going on, but no one actually knew um, where all of this was heading. Regional government doesn't hold that much power. Um, we're talking about public transport, education, uh, professional training, tourism, these sort of aspects. But of course, everyone sees this election as a runner up to the presidential election, which will be taking place here in France uh, next uh, spring in 2017. And the numbers are showing now that uh, the National Front is, is surprisingly, even for the National Front, doing very well here in France. Many link this to uh, the tragic events that have took place here uh, in Paris in November. And uh, uh, Marine Le Pen's stance, uh, she was softer than, say, in January when the Charlie Hebdo attacks took place. She expelled her father from the party to sort of give uh, the National Front a softer face. And uh, it seems to appeal to a very wide audience here in France, once again. 
uh, 30 percent of uh, the French population have voted for uh, the National Front in the regional elections. And they have six um, regions now. So uh, I've already mentioned the one up north, Picardie, Nord, Pas de Calais, the one down south, uh, Provence, Côte d'Azur. There's Alsace, Champagne, Ardennes, Lorraine. There's Bourgogne, Franche, Comté. Saint-Val-de-Loire and languedoc roussillon midi Perinet, And you can see that the names sound peculiar. They're too long. This is due to the fact that uh, regions have been combined. Certain regions have uh, been sort of stuck together, to say so. There were 22. Now there are just 13. And one of the first steps of the regional um, government would be to actually give them proper names because uh, as things stands right now uh, it's a little bit tricky for us journalists to even go through the names. Okay, on what's been a, a startling night really for the country's two mainstream parties in particular as Front National uh, take the lead uh, as we just await for official confirmation. Anna Baranova, RT contributor in Paris, thank you for that. Well, many are stating that the turn away from the ruling party is a, quote, punishment vote against the socialist government for failing to prevent the deadly Paris attacks and over its handling of the refugee influx as well, fears over which have been seized upon in Front National's campaigning. This election poster shows a veiled woman and a similar looking person with the French flag painted on her face. It says, choose your suburb, vote Front. And here's party leader Marine Le Pen voting on Sunday. Her clothes there, as you might have spotted, coordinated with the national colours of France. A blue coat, a white scarf and a red bag. Well, one of the party's candidates who heads its electoral list in Paris focused his campaign at voters who feel their neighbourhoods are abandoned by socialist leaders. Take a listen. You live in Ile de France, you vote in Ile de France. Là où vont bientôt s'installer les fameux migrants où l'islam radical est toujours plus présent. Dans tous ces endroits abandonnés par l'État, le Front National agit pour changer concrètement votre quotidien. Well, happy to say political analyst Geroid O'Coleman is waiting to speak to us from Paris as well. Geroid, you're very welcome to the programme. Uh, first of all, why do you think French voters appear to be swinging decisively to the right? Because the left is uh, just so pathetic. I mean, we have an of officially an le a left-wing government which is neoconservative and it's pursuing a foreign policy which is ultra-neoconservative and ultra-Zionist. Uh, and uh, the French people are, you know, are, are sick and tired of these foreign wars uh, that make no sense. So even though the media in France have been portraying Bashar al-Assad of Syria as a uh, demonic uh, dictator killing his own people, the French people would prefer to see him in power rather than the Islamic State. That's logical. Uh, and yet they have a government that refuses to back Bashar al-Assad against terrorism. So what Marine Le Pen is doing is she's talking very basic logic, and which most people can understand. Uh, she, the foreign analysts of the Front National, uh, when they talk about international relations, they tend to be a lot more diplomatic than uh, the ruling party, the, the so-called socialist party. Uh, so, for example, they don't demonize Putin. Marine Le Pen is, you know, on record stating that she admires uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, so, from a kind of an international perspective, uh, Marine Le Pen is a lot more intelligent than her competitors. But there is, of course, um, a much deeper agenda uh, involved in, in, in this, and I've said this before. The far-right party uh, is very close to Israel. So if, if Marine Le Pen says she supports uh, Bashar al-Assad and so on, it does not mean that France is going to pursue an anti-imperialist policy. Uh, Marine Le Pen is very much for the interventions in Africa, but she's, uh, she, what, she, what she's basically trying to do is, is exploit the discontent that exists in French society with, mainstream, uh, with the mainstream parties, with the other parties. Uh, so there is no opposition, really. What you have are about four main groups of right-wing parties. You have uh, the Trotskyites under uh, Mélenchon, uh, absolutely ridiculous when it comes to foreign policy. They supported the bombing of Libya. Uh, so right-wing neoconservatives uh, dressed up in socialist language. Then you have uh, François Hollande, neoconservative, uh, utterly discredited politics. 
you have Sarkozy, um, a gangster, basically, should be in jail, uh, and Mar Marine Le Pen. So you don't really have a choice in mainstream politics. I don't really think any of them are going to change France. I do think Marine Le Pen is probably going to be the candidate for the, for the election. And let's let's, let's get to that in a moment, Carol. Just talking about the vote here for a moment, because the, the, the National Front was predicted to gain in this for, first round, but did you expect it to lead in almost half of France's regions after not having won a region ever before? I, I, it's, it, it, it has been kind of obvious that Marine Le Pen and the Front National are going to win, because the, 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 for a very long time, since the 1950s, France has not had... Um, a coherent uh, left. There used to be a very strong communist party in France, and uh, they, because they they failed to 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 follow Marxist-Leninist line in the 19, uh, after the 1950s, they just withered away, and became irrelevant. So that the labor movement in France was very much abandoned, and you see this in places like Marseille, where the Front National become very strong because there's no there's basically no labor party. There's no party that supports labor. So the Front National has a policy of um, pursuing, it, it, it supports, how should I say, it, 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 it basically speaks the kind of language people can understand because there's so much confusion out there. Uh, Marine Le Pen will say very logical things like, why are we supporting Saudi Arabia and Qatar in the Middle East? Anybody can see that that's completely crazy. Um, she'll talk about uh, globalization. Everybody knows that globalization is, is, is something that is not uh, something that is in favor of, of, of people's interests, ordinary people's interests. So, but at the same time, um, you know, Marine Le Pen is, is, is someone who is uh, who's openly uh, close to Israel. So, for example, the, the dispatch she had, the dispute she had with her father recently, um, is kind of indicative of that. I mean, her father accused the Israeli secret intelligence service, the Mossad, of being behind the uh, attacks in January. That's something you won't hear Marine Le Pen say. You know, so uh, Marine Le Pen has been endorsed if, actually by the most radical uh, Zionist intellectuals in France, people such as uh, Alan Finkelkraut uh, has endorsed her. So I think she's very much become a mainstream candidate who's actually speaking very much a kind of a, a centre uh, language. In other words, she's, she's the only mainstream uh, candidate who's speaking non-extremist language. But I don't think there's going to be any major policy change uh, much will depend if she does if she is elected much will depend on how the geopolitics uh, uh, globally change in other words if Russia and China become so powerful uh, that the American uh, American hegemony really really begins to to decline even further then then Marine Le Pen might might, yeah. might change she, she might change camp you know well, uh, but 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 the, 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 but from a from a kind of a domestic point of view I can't actually see her being more right-wing than the government we have well that's I what I want to bring in girl because, because the right party campaigned the, sorry to interrupt you, but the party campaigned intensely on the issue of security and immigration. That, of course, is clear. But can it really do anything about either at a regional level if it secures them? Well, the immigration agenda, the thing is about the immigration agenda is that Marie Le Pen focuses on this. And I'd like, if, you know, if... Uh, I'd like to give her the benefit of the doubt, you know, because we're so desperate for cha for change in France. But uh, the thing about it is, is that if she's if she's blaming the the Muslims all the time, and she's blaming immigration, and the, the immigration is not this is not the issue. The issue is why do uh, people in uh, from from Africa uh, need to get the hell out of there? And one of the reasons is that because there are French companies like Areva that are exploiting all of their resources and stealing and robbing and pillaging the country. When the French decided to uh, enter in, into um, the Central African Republic uh, in 2014, Marine Le Pen was all for it. She, she's on the record stating that you know, France was protect, protecting its interests. Well, the protection of those interests entails the impoverishment of the Central African Republic, which means there's going to be a lot of people um, coming up through Africa, getting on boats, coming over into Europe to try to clean people's bins, the very same bins of the people who are uh, exploiting them uh, in their own country. So these are, these kind of structural aspects of globalization are never addressed by Marine Le Pen. She talk about globalization in very simple terms, but the problem is that these we have very complex problems that we need to deal with here. And she needs to, if, if she, you know, to convince, uh, if she if she's to be a convincing candidate, then she would really have to address that. I don't think she's going to do that. I think I think she's very much um, she's a, she's a, she's a, a very formidable politician. And she's playing the game. There's really no opposition to the, the current system. And uh, there's no coherent opposition. There's just no left wing yeah. in France. So because there's no left wing, right wing is basically kind of playing all these cards. So it's kind of a bit anti-globalization. You know, it's, a, it's sort of a bit anti-American and so on. 
And so uh, pe dis people who are disaffected with mainstream politics are kind of saying, she seems to be the only person who's talking sense around here. And the thing about that's the problem with Marine Le Pen. You know, when she says we need to support Assad, she's right. When she says Vladimir Putin is not a demon, okay. she's right. <laughs> so uh, that's the problem. You know? Just one more issue I want to bring up with you, uh, Gorod, while we have you. Of course, lest we forget, this is the first round of voting. The picture, I suppose, will become clearer after the second round of voting next week. But uh, what indications might this give us about what Marine Le Pen's chances as a presidential candidate in 2017 is 18 months away? It's not very long. I think that, that these are. This is a strong indication that Marine Le Pen is really on her way to becoming the first female president of the French Republic. Um, so I, I mean, we've been saying this for a very long time. Um, the, if you read the mainstream mainstream press, if you read Le Monde, uh, you would really get the impression that Marine Le Pen is a good candidate. Actually, if you, if you could, she's, she sounds very anti-establishment. Um, she even. She's, she even looks like she has a left-wing agenda. It's very, uh, you know, um, it talks about raising salaries. It talks about uh, securing uh, pensions. It talks about um, a lot of things most people are very worried about. So um, she's, but you know, there is a kind of suspicion among many people in France that the, that she's really being promoted uh, because the, the, the mainstream press in France is so discredited that um, most people when, if the mainstream press promotes, uh, if the mainstream press condemns some, some person, a lot mm. of people in France um, tend to think that that person is good. So that's one, one, for, for the re, for, uh, one of the reasons why most people support uh, in France want Assad, for example, in Syria to stay, is because they just they, they know that the mainstream press is completely discredited. So there, 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 there's a lot of confusion in, 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 in the current uh, political environment. I think Marine Le Pen is going to profit from that, and she's very likely to be the candidate for the elections in 2017. And I think, um, you know, she, her, her program is probably the only one that sort of kind of tends to make sense. But uh, it, it, I, I don't see it changing anything radical. I don't think it could be more right wing than the government we have. All right. I think Marine Le Pen will continue the same policies as the government we have. But well, it probably could be even a little worse, if that's possible. The thoughts of Gerardo Coleman, political analyst in Paris, speaking to us this hour. Thank you for joining us on the program, Gerard. You're welcome to RT International. This is the weekly. But first, we want to update you on the breaking news from the first round of France's regional elections, where exit polls show that the far-right National Front Party leads in six out of 13 regions. Marine Le Pen's party is estimated now to be on course for securing 30% of the total vote in the initial estimates. No actual results, we have to stress, has been declared as yet. But within the past hour, Le Pen addressed cheering supporters at party headquarters. Ladies and gentlemen, the people have spoken out and France can now hold her head high. This vote confirms what has not been confirmed by official observers, that the National Front is now the leading party in the country. Let's take a look at the campaign points which party leader Marine Le Pen there appeal to voters with. Merci, Madame Merkel de nous faire le plaisir de venir aujourd'hui avec votre vice-chancelier, administrateur de la province France. La construction européenne, petite au départ, animée de bonnes intentions sûrement, mais qui peu à peu détournée de ses objectifs initiaux, est devenue un terrible catalyseur de la violence de la mondialisation. Le refus absolu du fondamentalisme islamique doit être proclamé haut et fort par quiconque tient la vie et la liberté pour les valeurs les plus précieuses. Well, of course, the voting is taking place in the wake of the Paris terror attacks three weeks ago. The current refugee crisis in Europe is also likely to have an impact. Success in the regional elections is a key step on the road to the presidential race in 2017. Let's go live now to Paris and to RT contributor 
Anna Baranova for more on what we've been seeing. Hi, Anna. The right wingers were predicted to do well, but the exit poll successes appear to be even surprising to them. Absolutely, Yunan. Uh, good evening to you. Marine Le Pen has already been quoted uh, saying that the results have exceeded their own expectations. And uh, everyone was expecting that they would do very well in two regions. And we're talking about six regions now. So uh, the two stronghold positions that uh, Marine Le Pen and her niece, Marion Le Pen, hold are in Picardie Nord, Pas de Calais, which is in the north of France, and then way down in the south of France, uh, Provence. Côte d'Azur there. They've scored 41% uh, with Marine Le Pen up north and 42% down south. That is a lot. In the overalls, uh, we're talking about the National Front scoring about 30%, which again is uh, quite a lot because no one has won in the first uh, round previously. Um, there is going to be a second round next Sunday on the 13th of December, so we're waiting for that. But even now, the results are uh, are quite surprising to many. Now, this has been anticipated by uh, so many people here in France because in France it is forbidden to speculate on the elections uh, on the election day. So the media was tiptoeing around uh, the facts uh, uh, of what was going on, but no one actually knew um, where all of this was heading. Regional government doesn't hold that much power. Um, we're talking about public transport, education, uh, professional training, tourism, these sort of aspects. But, of course, everyone sees this election as a runner-up to the presidential election, which will be taking place here in France uh, next uh, spring in 2017. And the numbers are showing now that uh, the National Front is, is surprisingly, even for the National Front, doing very well here in France. Many link this to 